Hi there, my name's Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm checking out the Fender Tone Master Twin. So I've had this amp here for a little while, a few months, and I've been trying to figure out how I feel about it. To cut to the chase, I really like it, but there's a few things that I would like to see changed. I have a few thoughts about it. I just want to put it into a video. I figured these have been out for a long time. You've probably heard these, you've probably played these, you may own these. So I'd love to hear from you as well, because this is one of those videos where I don't really have a definitive answer on how I feel about it. So what are these amps? Well, I remember when these were introduced at NAMM, it was a big deal. What Fender did was, rather than release something like a Helix or a Kemper, they've recreated the classic amps, in fact, most of the line now, with these new solid state versions. Now, when you say solid state, some people run for the hills, but what they've tried to do here is put all that processing power into just recreating the amp. So rather than 100 amps and 100 effects, this particular twin is just an exact copy, the best they could do of a twin using the full power of that DSP. So the reverb and the tremolo circuits are also using the full power of the DSP. So rather than a million average sounds, we get a few awesome sounds. So why am I confused about how I feel about this amp? Well, when they announced this, I thought this is it. This is the amp for me. I love traditional, I love technology. I want to be seen playing Fender amps and Fender guitars, but I want the flexibility of a modeler. But I don't want all the options of a modeler because then I spend hours and weeks and months in this room creating patches. So my first thought was these can be right up my street. And I've wanted to try one ever since for that very reason. And in some ways that's correct, but in some ways I kind of miss the other stuff. Let me explain why. But first of all, a quick demo from me, SSS Fender Strat, American Pro 2 Strat, going through the HX effects just to add some effects and reverbs, but that's bypassed right now. I'm going straight into the amp. I'll play the amp flat, then I'll dial it in a little bit, and then I'll add in the reverb and the tremolo, just as a quick overview of what it does. There's also an attenuator on the back. I'm sure you've seen this in other videos. I've got that set 100%. So this is basically what a real, a real a Fender tube twin would sound like. So here we go. This is everything flat. So I really like that sound. That is your classic Fender sound. It's warm, it's fat. When you go to your bridge pickup, which is really bright on a Strat, it still sounds okay because the amp is warm. So straight away, this is my first impressions when I got this was, this sounds amazing in the room because this is the twin version. You've got two speakers and also a kickback stand, which I now think is invaluable in a tube amp. When you lean this back in your room and set it like that, and sit and play, it fills the room. And that's what so many people want from an amplifier. But unlike the original twin, which I've briefly tried in a studio and blew me away, literally, but in a good way, this can be played at lower volumes. This has the direct output, the attenuator, and is half the weight. This is only around 33 pounds. So this is why this is more attractive. As much as I want to own a Fender twin, and I'd love to compare this to a Fender tube twin, I would never, ever, ever, ever take that tube twit twin to a gig. Whereas this would be great at a gig because with the digital pedals, you still have to amplify them. If you're using in-ears, it's fine. But if you need stage volume, you still need to amplify yourself. So what are you going to do? Then you've got to find a good full range speaker or power amp to use with it. This is everything in one. This is your amp, your preamp, your reverb, your tremolo, and your direct out and your stage monitor all in one. And it does a great job of that. All amps should have those legs built in. It's really cool when you tilt it back and you really hear it. So it's gonna be amazing in the band in that respect. So the other thing that's really good is if you turn the attenuation up and boost the volume, you get some nice drive sounds as well, even from this solid state amp. It sounds really good. I'll give you a quick demo of that. So I'll do just what I said and see what you think of this.
what? I really, really, really like that. That's a really good distortion sound. Now, a Fender Twin isn't meant to distort, but the fact you can drive it that hard and get that kind of tone, I love that tone. That's the tone that I want. So I would have a bright, clean Fender sound. I'd turn the bright switch on, make a really nice, bright, sparkly tone. If I could then switch to that for my rhythm and then add a pedal for my heavy 80s style songs, that's exactly what I want from a product. But here's the thing. You can only do that when you attenuate it and the bright switch isn't selectable. So this is really leading me into how I feel about this amp. They did such a great job. It's so light. It sounds so good. It does make you feel like you're playing the tube version. Now, I'm still not sure how I feel about that because the part of me that was excited for this hybrid product a few years ago has been thinking about it. And now I'm wondering, is it enough? That's really the topic of this review. That's really my thought from this review. Where do we draw the line? How much is enough with digital? Because now I feel limited by the fact they haven't made it fully accessible. Here's what I think. The clean with the bright switch on is amazing. But when I run drive pedals into that, I don't like it. I need to turn the bright switch off. You have to do that from the amp itself. The drive sounds that I showed you are amazing, but you have to access them by turning the attenuation down and cranking the master. I think this is leading me towards saying, if you just want a clean amp, if you only play clean, you play country, this is amazing. But if you need a bit more flexibility, like I do, unfortunately, I think we need a version two. And there's a few things I think they should add. I think we need a direct input from Modeler to go straight into the power amp, because I would love to use something like the latest floor Modeler, but with this behind me to kind of fool people. And maybe some bands want that. They want that traditional look. It is a thing. But also add MIDI of some kind. So let me patch that into the HX effects. Let me hit a button and the bright switch turns on and I have a bright clean and I changed another to another button and the bright switch goes off and the attenuation kicks in and the volume goes up. Let me tweak all that remotely because I, as much as I love traditional, I am reliant now on some of the features of modern tech, digital technology. I agree that some pedals give you way too much and it's complete overload, but I wonder, is there enough in this? So you could use something like a multi effects to tweak each channel as well and use external effects, which I'll show you next. That will work too. But the sounds in here are so good. And I'm not always blown away by solid state products, but I love the sound of this. But I can't access them remotely from the foot switch. And that's really what's stopping me here. I think a version two of this with the power amp in and some kind of MIDI connection to control all the features remotely would then make this amazing for people that just want to play clean, play country all night, or people that want to have like a few different varied sounds for a wedding band. So that's what's on my mind. And I said it at this point in the video because that is what I've been trying to get across. I love the simplicity, but I wonder, is it too simple? Let me know in the comments below. And let me show you what else this has because like I said, all the power has gone into just these features. So the reverb on here is great. I want to show you the reverb next. Did you hear the drip on that, that drip sound? That is the best spring reverb I've ever heard. And when you combine that with the huge two 12 inch speakers in the room and the huge box it's in, it's all very well made by the way as well. And the fact that legs are pointing it back at you, that's a huge sound. If you like, you know, if you play shadows songs, if you play clean guitar or surf guitar with that reverb, I don't think you'll get any better than that. Now let's check out the tremolo. And by the way, these are foot switchable with the included foot switch. So that's not an effect that I normally use myself, but again, 
if you own a Fender Twin Tube and you want something lighter to carry around, they did a killer job with this. I don't think I've heard a digital recreation that sounds as good as this. In fact, I have compared this amp to the Fender Twin in the QC. And I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the QC models. I think they sound really realistic. But that doesn't sound like this. It sounds very different. Of course, I don't know which one is most accurate. They may be modeled after different amps, and all amps are different, especially from back in the 60s. So that's hard to say. But needless to say, I just go on face value with things these days. I haven't yet heard something that recreates that Fender thing as well as this. And how does it take pedals? It actually takes drive pedals really well. But what I found is you've got to find the right pedals because the amp has that Fender sound. And also in the room, I've noticed it has a bit more of a mid poke, which it gives it a real push in the face, a real punch in the face. But then when you put a drive through it, it can be too kind of honky. So what you need to do, I've decided, is to find the right drive pedals. You really want drive pedals with three band EQs so you can shape them as they go into this amp. You see, sometimes it's nice having multiple channels because you can set each channel for each sound. With this, you are compromising with a single channel amp. You're compromising that everything's hitting that same tone stack. So what you could do is use a multi-effects that has some really good EQs in it and shape those effects as they go in. That will work nicely, but it still has that kind of characteristic in the amp that still suits the low gain more. And to be fair, I've not seen any metal players play a Fender Twin on stage. So if you play metal, this probably isn't the right amp for you. But you can get some really good drive sounds in it via pedals. I'll show you that now. I'll just load up like a King of Tone kind of pedal in front of it. <laughs> So it takes drive pedals pretty well. Like all single channel amps, I have to cut all the presence and tone on the pedal. That's why multi-effects is good because you can use external EQs in that to shape it even more. That's just the problem I have with all single channel amps. They did a great job. It's a great amp. It looks incredible in the room. It's almost worth having as a piece of furniture. It looks just like the tube version. It's light, it's portable. The direct out sounds amazing. The direct out in a way sounds better than the actual amp to me. So actually that brings me to another point. Maybe for a gigging musician with no uh, crew, and if you're especially for taking PA as well, maybe the deluxe version or even one of the others is better because that's even smaller and lighter. It won't fill the room as much, but you can put the direct out through your monitors and hear that. So this is definitely for a certain player, okay? If you are just a devout tube amp fan and you've got your pedals and everything, then I would stick with that. I really think, if you own one of these Fender amps and there's the Tone Master version and you gig all the time, then it's worth having it for the gigs. In some ways, I don't want to say it's going to re one's going to replace the other. I think this will do some things better than the tube version and vice versa. They are very different amps, but it's a good amp. It's a really good amp. But the biggest question for me is, where do we strike the balance of this technology? I think maybe this has been simplified too much. And I don't like saying that because I like simplicity, but I really, really think a version two of this with the, I'll say it one more time, the power amp in and a MIDI control for all the options, which by the way, I believe all tube amps should have MIDI and a direct out now. In fact, I don't really want to buy an amp anymore that doesn't have an IR out and a MIDI connection to do all my settings and everything. And the more control they give you over that MIDI, the better. Because the great thing with that is you don't have to use it. You can still just plug in and play and get a great sound like I've been doing with this. But if you need those other features, they're there. Right now, for me, they're not there. And I'm going to have to find workarounds. So now it's not simple anymore. And do I want to do that when I could use a tube amp that's already set up the way I like it? I don't know. So that's why I'm torn. This is clearly for a certain player. It's really well done, but who are those players? What I'd love to hear is, I would love to hear from people that are currently gigging the Fender Tone Master. Tell me how you like it and exactly how you use it, because that would answer a lot of these questions. And I really do hope we see a version two. I know we might then say, well, there's a new version and mine's worthless. No, I've heard this argument online as well. People are saying, you can't repair this. It'll be worthless in five years. I mean, the same things happen with everything, right? The laptops, the computers, the, the phones, all that. So everything digital now, that's the price that you pay. 
And it's not to say that you won't be able to repair this in five years. It just depends how fender view it really and what kind of repair program they have. But that is the price we pay for digital equipment. It will eventually be replaced by something better, but you can still use the old one. Look at the Kemper. People are still playing Kempers now and touring with them. You don't have to buy the, the latest and greatest. But I also want to see things improve for the reasons I mentioned in this video. This was a tough one for me. I, I really am impressed. It's not making me want to sell my tube amp. But then I've played a lot of tube amps that don't make me want to sell my tube amp either. So I'm kind of torn. Don't really have an opinion on this video. I always like to finish with a conclusion. I think I will revisit this if they make that version two I mentioned. I think that would be a really great amp for what I want and my needs. But the part of me I spoke about at the start of the video that likes simplicity does appreciate this amp a lot. And also my back appreciates it too. Because that's the one reason I went by a Fender Tube Twin. I'm not going to pick it up. All right, if you're new here, please subscribe and ring the bell. I need your comments down below because I haven't quite made my mind up on this yet. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.